So welcome or welcome back to Faith for Friday. For this, for the second case for this week, we are going to Illinois. Uh, so, uh, so of course, as you can imagine, this case also takes place out of Chicago. And um, unlike the, uh, most of my other Chicago cases, this case actually has a lot more information. In fact, it actually reached uh, national coverage at one point, like around the time that the case happened, of course. And so as you can imagine, national coverage, like national news is also gonna be like a lot of coverage. Which you know it's more information, which you know that's good, that's what we need, that's what we want. Uh, tragically, there is a death of a child, as you can imagine from the thumbnail and the title. <coughs> so a disclaimer on that before you even start, because I know some people are not able to watch that due to they may know someone personal that died as young, or they almost died young at a young age themselves. Either way, I like I'm not gonna judge you. I obviously have more videos where they're not children but someone still dies because of course this is the murder channel so with that being said i'm gonna quit my rambling and let's go get started so andrew thomas freud jr was born on october october 14 2013 to a 36 year old joanne cunningham and 60 year old andrew freud senior so joanne was born on february 28 1983 and then andrew senior he was born on december he was born december 19 1958 so apparently from the story that it goes how they met was she was actually married to somebody else and they were, the person that she was married to at the time, they were in the process of divorce. She didn't have the money and as you imagine, divorce lawyers cost money and Andrew just so happened to be a divorce lawyer and he just so happened to cross paths with Joanne because apparently he saw her like crying on the bench. Um, she didn't have a job, so of course that was going to make it even harder because you know again, lawyers cost money and she was also addicted to up to 15 substances a day. So, um, Andrew Senior, he's not, uh, yeah, Senior, he's not exactly perfect either. Uh, he also suffered from drug and alcohol problems. Uh, they would get together and try to steal things from Joanne's first husband. So, you know, over committing crimes together. So then, of course, they conceived AJ. And, of course, like I said, he was born in October 2013. He was born with heroin in the system because, like I said, Joanne was addicted. So, obviously, being the mother and you're carrying the child, obviously, the baby's going to show signs of heroin, right? So, then he's taken away, and he's, like, they don't get him back for, like, a whole year and a half. So then, apparently, Joanne had another kid before Andrew, who was, like, 12 at the time. He was also in state custody, and she was actually trying to get him back, I assume, along with Andrew. So, Joanne's mom would actually say that this child was neglected of medical care, clean clothes, and a healthy environment, which, obviously, a child would need that in order to be successful. Well, not successful, but... That's the ideal situation for a child. So, of course, um, Andrew Senior being an attorney and him over here, like, committing crimes and shit, he gets take he gets suspended, so not permanently taken off, but, like, suspended from the Bar Association and is made to go to rehab, and he is reinstated. I don't say how long he's in rehab, but had to, I guess about, like, less than two months because it said after two months he was reinstated. So in between June of 2015 to March of 2016, there were 17 unscheduled visits to the house to, I guess, like, check on the welfare of the children. Because it wasn't just AJ. Apparently, he had, like, a younger brother named Parker. And then there, on top of those 17 unscheduled, there were, like, nine that were actually scheduled in those months. So then at this point in the story, uh, apparently, Joanne and Andrew Singer had apparently, like, split. Because, like I said, it seemed like they did eventually get married. Um, and then she gets pregnant by this... But she has her fifth child by this man named Daniel. So then Daniel is living in the house with AJ and Parker. And she's seven months pregnant with Daniel's child. So the only child that's Daniel's that Joanne has is the child she was carrying at the time, right? And so then apparently he was he would get arrested because he was violating his probation. Because apparently the crime he committed was he attacked a hotel, not a hotel, a hospital guard and two nurses. So, it doesn't say when, but sometime in 2018, uh, the Department of Children and Family Services, they would eventually, they would obviously get allegations that AJ and Parker are being abused. So then, of course, they got to go investigate because that's what you're supposed to do. Well, however, of course, you, as many of these cases go, the cases are eventually dropped after, like, um, unfounded claims. So then on one Halloween, again, all, all these events are, like, mixed up, so it doesn't give, like, an exact timeline as to when all these things happen. A neighbor would apparently see AJ on Halloween night with a bunch of bandages. Keep in mind, it's Halloween, so she's thinking he's like a mummy or something. So she compliments him on the mummy costume, but his mom says, oh no, he actually, bore, he actually poured boiling hot water himself that morning, and all his bandages are from his injuries from pouring boiling hot water himself. 
So the same neighbor, uh, she would say that there were times where she heard AJ like screaming and crying while she was walking her dog. Uh, as you can imagine, she did call DCFS like multiple times. There was another time when she saw Parker and AJ uh, out just like, I want to say by their driveway and she was asking what they were doing. And then one of the kids, which I think was AJ, had said, we got to go to a hotel or mom and dad, which was Joanne and AJ, Andrew Sr., I assume, because... I don't know why they wouldn't be calling Daniel dad, but like we gotta go to the, we gotta go to a hotel so our parents don't kill each other. And Joanne recognizes the neighbor, and I guess she got beef with her because like you know you call uh, DCFS on my kids even though she was doing the right thing. That's what you do, and said mind your business and don't call police on my kids again. So then in December of what seems like 2018, Joanne would call police basically saying that her phone and her Adderall, which was prescription by the way, was missing. She would claim that her boyfriend. Daniel did it. Like I said, the one, Daniel the one's living in the house. Daniel would say that she's the only thing I did it to basically get back at me. Now, what exactly she was getting back here for, it didn't say. And that police had actually noticed a strong smell of feces in the house, especially in AJ and Parker's room. So then, of course, there's like broken floors, uh, water damage, and exposed pipes. Obviously, that's not safe. So police called the zoning office, who Joanne refused to have them let in. Uh, the police noticed that AJ was actually wearing a diaper, even though he's like five, six in the story five or six in the story and also like most i'm saying like you know i'm gonna get out of the diaper phase of what maybe two so obviously that's a little odd him being like a five or six year old wearing a diaper unless he has like unless you have a condition then obviously that's that's not normal right so and there's like bruises on him so then joanne would say oh well a dog attacked him and that's how he got the bruises Sorry, AJ had even told a doctor when, when they took him to the hospital like uh, maybe mommy didn't mean to hurt me maybe she didn't mean to hit me with a belt he was basically telling a lot, as kids do, as he needed to be telling, because, you know, he was he was getting abused. However, he was, uh, Joanne was still allowed to leave with him, despite the, the a practically a confession came out of his mouth, but they, she still was allowed to leave with him. So the police would tell DCFS that there was no electricity in the house and that there were poor living conditions. And apparently, according to them, no electricity alone does mean a visit is required, so that's good. However, there were no actual visits done, Despite there being, like, no electricity. And apparently that's supposed to be good enough to, like, come over. Um, one day they find Joanne passed out in her car. And what I like to assume is AJ and Parker, like, in the backseat just chilling. So then AJ is taken to the hospital. I like to assume Parker's taken too. But apparently, I guess Parker didn't have any injuries as to why I didn't report, like, the injuries he had. If any. I'm not saying he didn't. But, like, they didn't report on Parker. So, not that Parker isn't important. It's just, I guess they were mostly focused on AJ due to what happens in the end. Okay. So, they say AJ had bruising on his fist, and then, obviously, D DCFS gets contacted again, and then, um, despite, after several failed attempts, they get to the house, and by the time they get back to the house, obviously, those bruises on his fist are gonna be, like, healed up. So, like, we, we don't see anything, like, what are y'all talking about? So, uh, this part is actually a little fuzzy as to what happened, so I'm gonna tell you what the believed timeline of events ha is, and I guess, like, you can decide from there. Of course, like I said, sources are always down below, as always. So if you want to figure out like for yourself, but I'm going to tell you like what is believed to be what happened. Okay. So around April 15th, 2019, yeah, 2019. So AJ's like, AJ was like five when this happened. Joanne goes into the room. So I guess like Andrew Singer's still living there or whatever. And she goes and tells him that like, a, a, wait, oh my gosh, AJ is not breathing. So then he makes a search for child CPR. And then the next day, so April 16th, so then apparently, um, after they believe that AJ is deceased, they put him in a plastic bag, oh sorry, a plastic tote, and they wrap him in like multiple bags, and then they wrap him in multiple bags, and then they take him to the nearby city of apparently Woodstock, and then they dig a shallow grave, and then they bury him there. So, they don't call the police until like April 18th, but of course they don't have to say, well, we killed our child, because of course, like, why would you do that? Um, they just fly out saying that AJ's missing, which obviously we know he's dead, but the, pu the public doesn't know that. Only, I guess, Andrew Sr. and Joanne know he's, when he's deceased. So then he would say that normally I sleep in the in the same room as Parker, the brother, but jo Parker was sleeping in the room with Joanne that night. And then Joanne would go to the station. She probably was cooperating at first, I guess, like to try to take the suspicion on her. But then she quickly, uh, she gets a lawyer. As you know, as people do, and then the lawyer pretty much tells her to like shut up and don't say shit. 
So, uh, you know, the canine dogs that used to like smell like drugs and stuff. So they get these sniffer dogs to smell AJ scent to try to see like where he may have possibly went. Cause again, at the, in the public's eyes, this is a missing child case. So, but the sniffer dogs apparently never went like past the house. So basically that's their way of saying this boy ain't never left the house. Or was if he did, he ain't leave willingly. Cause uh, his scent stops at the house. So then of course they check the city the nearby neighborhood, and even the local lake, which apparently was named Crystal Lake. So apparently this must have been a pretty chill neighborhood. Like, the neighborhood this happened in, this must have been, a, like, a good neighborhood where, like, nothing really happens. So understandably, people are, like, scared. So this must fear people, like, you know, this child went missing, would my child go missing, you know, like, understandably concerned. So then they tell you that despite AJ being five, so he would technically qualify for an Amber Alert, because, you know, Amber Alert under 18, that's especially a five-year-old. He's not a teenager, so he can't say, like, a runaway. They never issued an alert for Andrew. And then they took Parker away after they found out that DCFS was in contact with the family multiple times. So Joanne's first husband, who's like not named, which understandably, you know, knowing like what this woman did, like when later find out, I wouldn't want me, what my name out in public either. So that's why I'm calling her, that's why I'm calling him the first husband. Otherwise I would call him by his name. So the first husband, apparently he would say that she was beautiful before she got addicted to the drugs. And she only got addicted to the drugs because apparently she was... Prescribe one of them, because that's how it usually starts, for like some pain she was having. And then she was living off, like, I guess she just like constantly like not being in pain, which, you know, understandable. But then she got addicted and then it started from one and then it just it kept escalating. So then Andrew Sr., the, the father here, um, he pretty much refused to cooperate, like question wise, but he was seen like yelling like Andrew's name out of the street. I guess trying to make like he's innocent, even though, of course, we know he's not. A visual was held for Andrew the next day. Of course, it's still believed that he's alive because his passing hasn't been announced yet. And Joanne and Andrew Sr. would, of course, revive because, of course, they are the parents, so it looks suspicious they don't. But they arrived separately. So the police eventually get a search warrant to uh, search the home. Andrew Sr. Andrew Sr. is arrested, but he apparently is, like, brought back to the house like, within an hour later. Joanne and her lawyer would go on interview to, with Good Morning America. And Joanne actually had a hearing to get Parker back. So like I said, they took Parker after they found out DCFS was in contact with them multiple times. She was trying to get Parker back. Because like, hey, we ain't got AJ, so like, can I have my other kid back? Because I'm over worried about this one. And she had a hearing that following Tuesday. So then the police, uh, after they get the search warrant, because obviously, like, I, even though I guess uh, this suspected a crime has happened, they said, look, we try to play it safe. We're going to search, search warrant so we can take stuff out. They get a shower head, apparently a plastic tote, a shovel, and brown bags with unknown items. So the, uh, I imagine like the brown like paper bags you see at the grocery stores. That's like that's why you couldn't see what was at the back, you know. Anyway, so then they also noticed that the windows have padlocks on them. And then Joanne said that Joanne said that AJ had gone down the window and she basically put locks on them to prevent it from happening again. So, of course, um, Andrew Sr., he gets tired of the pressure of lying to the public and saying that my child's missing, but he actually knows what happens. So, he winds up turning on Joanne and tells that, look, yeah, our child's dead. Here's where he's at. Of course, police go there and they find AJ's body. And then the police tell the two of them together with the evidence, with the materials that we found in the house, we believe that Joanne beat AJ with the shower head while he was taking a cold shower as a punishment. So, then, of course, now that AJ's body's found, we went from a missing person's case to a murder. Um, Illinois does not play around, I guess, when it comes to these murder cases, because both their bails were set to $5 million each, but they only had to pay at least 10%, so five, so like half a million. You could pay more, obviously, but you had to pay at least half a million in order to get released. So then a GoFundMe was created for AJ's funeral, now that we have to have the funeral. Uh, whatever money was left over for the funeral would go to Raisin Parker, because, you know, kids are expensive, and it said all in all that 50 grand was raised. So remember how I said uh, Joanne was pregnant during this time? So then she winds up giving birth to a girl named Gracie Faith on May 31st of 2019. Daniel says he was the father of this child, uh, and that was confirmed through a paternity test. He was, in fact, the father. He said that he wanted to be in the child's life. However, with Joanne in jail, she obviously can't raise a kid herself because, you know, she's in jail. So him being the father, he apparently never showed up for a hearing, which you're kind of supposed to do that if you want custody of your kid. And then, sadly, Daniel apparently was found dead in September of 2019 and only 36 due to a drug overdose. So then the caseworker that apparently was on AJ's case, they were put on administrative leave. Uh, every case that they were working on was reviewed to make sure that the outcome didn't wind up like AJ again, so pretty much like another child death. 
or that any child that was generally being abused was getting out, like he, they got out as ASAP. Remember I said earlier, uh, Andrew Senior made that say, that search for child CPR. Yeah, they eventually find that after searching through his phone. Uh, they find a shopping list, and apparently there's like duct tape, bleach, air fresher, and gloves. Uh, plastic gloves to be specific. And so Joanne would say that the bleach, because obviously the bleach is going to suspicious, if not the duct tape and the gloves, that's going to suspicious, definitely. Uh, she would say that the bleach was to clean the house, even though, again, like I said, the house is very dirty, strong smell of feces, ain't no bleach being used in the house. And then also they searched the child CPR because Joanne was pregnant at the time, which she was, and claimed that she might need that information in case something happened. Oh, and also the duct tape, because the duct tape, that's probably like the most shady part of it, of it all. Uh, the duct tape she claimed would be used to hang pictures in the house. So then we get to the trial, and audio recordings that, for some reason, Joanne recorded, which would later be used against her, thank God. Uh, there are audio recordings of Joanne degrading AJ. So then, of course, she would get asked, like, why she did this, and she did this. She would claim that she did this to send to AJ Sr. to prove that AJ was a problem at the house. And she would claim that he had oppositional defiant disorder, which it was never confirmed that he actually had. And then also, she would claim that he thought he was the leader of the house, even though, again, he was only five. But of course, uh, we got the caseworker, who apparently was Carlos J. Acosta, and apparently has a boss named Andrew Sullivan. They were charged with two counts of felony endangerment of a child and one count of reckless conduct. They were required to hand over all documents involving AJ, so they can investigate to see where, where you guys are wrong. And as you can imagine, I guess they got connections, or I guess they, got, they just had money like that. It didn't say how much their bail was, but they were bailed out soon after. On October 16, 2019, there was a federal lawsuit against Carlos, because apparently there was like some fake documents in the documents regarding AJ. So then Carlos and Andrew, of course, both get fired. So uh, They get fired in December, and then the police will say there was no more public information coming out regarding those two. So that's pretty much the end of those two. So then Joanne would come out and say, apparently like after this happened, that she started doing drugs because of abuse she suffered as a child and that her brother had took, took his own life. Her mother, so Joanne's mother, would apparently deny that any of this abuse ever happened. In 2020, the house that the that Joanne and her kids and Andrew Andrew Senior and all that were living in, that house gets demolished because like the community just didn't want to look at it anymore because it was bringing back bad memories. So it doesn't say when, but Joanne apparently took a plea deal to where the judge would sentence her instead of the jury because, again, this is the death of a child we're talking about here. So she was like, they gonna sentence me to death or something, you know, as, you know, as they should have. But, you know, she was like, the judge is gonna, maybe the judge can be a lighter sentence. So she gets 35 years with three years probation after she gets out. So then Andrew, I guess, I want to say Andrew Singer also took a plea deal because he only got 20 years. And that's for, like, involuntary manslaughter, concealment of a homicide, and apparently aggravated battery, and the murder charge was apparently dropped. So in October of 2023, Carlos would get sentenced to two to five years with fines up to 25 grand. And of course, Andrew, the boss, he gets acquitted, it seems like on all charges, because they said it didn't, we didn't, they don't know how, how much he's involved, so we don't know how much to punish him, so we're just going to quit him on everything. But yeah, that's pretty much the up-to-date information on everybody. So yeah, uh, definitely a sad case, uh, definitely a longer case. I think this video is going to be at least a good 20 minutes long. Could be wrong, could be a lot more, could be less, we'll see. Um, anyway, with that being said, if you have any more cases you feel I should cover, but cases that are like not national coverage. And it's not that those cases aren't important. It's just I want to also cover the cases that not everybody knows and that not everyone has really like discussed. Like the cases that are like out of the spotlight, if that makes sense. But like you feel I should cover it, but it's not as well known, if that makes sense. Okay. So with that being said, uh, definitely leave recommendations down below. Let me know your comments. Let me know anything what should have Joanne or even Andrew Senior. Andrew Jr. got death. Like, definitely let me know. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. So if I play dead, will you regret everything that you did, that you said? I don't think you understand what you're doing. And my heart's black and blue from the bruising. I feel like when I'm with you, I'm losing. I feel like you think that this amusing. Sitting there gaslighting and confusing. Was it me? Is it me? Am I deluded?
I'm the one who's always sorry, the conclusion Even though I offer all of the solutions I wish you loved me like I love you, it's stupid When I'm alone with you, I never feel lucid I wish I wasn't struck by Cupid I wish when I first saw you, I knew this When I'm with you, I feel so useless I feel diluted, my heart's been wounded Silhouettes of you are like a dawn Never really know just what you want with you, I don't ever feel calm I could feel the sweat inside my palm Play with me like cats and a string